Here's something you may not have noticed during this week's episodes of Raw and SmackDown. WWE didn't upload their clips to YouTube as the programs were going on. They held off until later in the evening. Why? We're getting ahead of ourselves. Hold that hand because it's another tactic to try and stop this rating slump. For you see, and it does make sense to a certain degree, WWE now thinks, well, if we just stop offering these shortened clips, maybe some people will actually come back and watch it how we would prefer them to watch it, which is via your television set. And look, it is a good idea. You may as well throw everything at the wall at the moment to try and do what you can, but let's not pretend that low ratings have anything to do with Google's video service. Why? Here's why. Let's talk the obvious first. I do respect WWE for doing this because their ratings hole, that's me digging the hole, just keeps getting deeper and deeper. At the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to stop. I know that last week's ratings was a 2.1 and this week it kind of bumped up a little bit to a 2.2, but nobody is enjoying that number. They really want to be in the threes. You can't rest on your laurels. So even if you have to go around to every single wrestling fan's house, knock on their door and say, please keep watching, you better do it. Although really that's gonna go like this. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, yes, hello. So sorry terribly to bother you, but we were wondering if you wouldn't mind coming back and watching Monday Night Raw and possibly Tuesday Night Smackdown. We don't care about that at the moment because it's not on Fox, but Raw is the A show. Would you watch? Shouldn't you be like, focusing on your television show and making it like not wank. No, but you don't see, we're changing everything. We're going to make it so much more involving and so much more fun. We have a, a wild card thing now where Raw wrestlers from Raw can go to SmackDown and SmackDown they can go to Raw so you never know, you chill on every episode. And while you think you're confused because you don't understand the brand split anymore, it will be fun, it's interesting, it's different. Look, I'm closing the door. You're weird, you're weird, go away. And start jobbing the revival out and making their penises set on fire. However, pretending this is the sole reason seems a bit mad to me. It's not like there aren't other ways to go and watch Raw or SmackDown away from the official channels, should you so choose. And yes, of course, if something is affiliated with WWE, it's always going to do better than random things that are just out there in the world of the internet. You just sometimes have to call a spade a spade and you've got to look at the situation for what it is. And the reason ratings are going down is simply because Raw and SmackDown aren't that good at the moment. This seemed to hit an all time low this week when you are looking at the very hardcore internet fan base who for around 24 hours were pretty aggressive about what they'd just seen. People were sick and tired of Raw feeling like it was all over the place and that was made worse by everything that was going on behind the scenes over the past seven days. I mean, it's why we got this brand new wide card rule and just for a cheap plug, please don't go and watch the last wide video where we talk about the wild card rule. You'll learn a lot, I promise. To keep things super simple though, if Raw did start kicking all the ass and taking all the names, there is no way, no way that anybody would be going to YouTube to try and catch up and that is for two specific reasons. One, when you're well into a television show like Game of Thrones, you don't want to risk going out there on the world of social media and having it spoiled. And two, when something is that entertaining, you want to be part of that reactionary conversation. And we did mention Game of Thrones, and while there is a whole other side to that, when it comes to Twitter and when you're allowed to talk about it, it is really nice and it's quite fulfilling to be able to share your thoughts and have somebody else who is watching the show at the exact same time go, oh, Phyllis, I agree. And then Phyllis and Andrew, these are the two people I've created. They get married and they go get married off in Vegas. You see it all the time and I've been there. When I stay up late to watch a pay-per-view and you see tweets flying off left, right and centre, there is something just very rewarding about being a part of that, even more so when something shocking or controversial happens. It's not the best example I have because the whole show was morally bankrupt, but when Shane McMahon became the best in the world at Crown Jewel, the sheer outrage about what wrestling fans had just seen actually made that moment oddly fun. People were coming up with memes and gifts for days. It took a very bad moment and actually made it one of the highlights of 2018 if you were up and sharing all of this live with the entire planet. In no world is anybody really excited about Raw or SmackDown, but deciding to hold back 
because they know in a couple of hours they can watch it all on YouTube. The more logical reason for this probably comes when we start talking about the USA Network and Fox. They're going to be super pissed that their ratings are in the toilet, and when you see WWE uploading videos of the show as the show is going on, especially when USA and Fox don't see any of that cash, you're damn right you're going to make a call to Vince McMahon and say, hey pal, maybe you should stop doing this. This is what worries me more than anything else, because while it is fine that WWE makes decisions like this, you cannot ignore the obvious. Even taking out the wild card rule from everything, throwing Sami Zayn in a bin only for him to miraculously appear again on SmackDown Live, or taking a talent like The Revival and burying them with fireballs because they decided they may want to leave the company, as well as all the other nonsense we saw over the last few days, isn't doing anything for your television product. And it's probably that that you should start looking at and going, I don't think this is the right thing to do. And if you don't think that, and your strategy is actually going in reverse, it's not working, because I had a look, and that Revival Uso segment on YouTube right now has a 62% like to dislike ratio, and YouTube considers that to be very, very bad. Simply put, WWE has to stop pointing the finger else where it's nothing to do with YouTube, it's nothing to do with talent being injured. I mean, back in the Attitude Era, Stone Cold Steve Austin would take huge breaks and that didn't affect the ratings. It's not because of the weather. It's not because Sasha Banks decided to walk out. It's not asshole fans. It's not the time. It's not the month. It's not the year. It's not the gobbledygooker. It's not Repo Man. It's not the Brooklyn Brawler. It's not Doink the Clown. It's one simple thing. The product just isn't appealing to people anymore. That's simple. That's simple. Focus on that. Figure out what people want and then start giving it to them. And please, for the love of everything, start making wholesale changes to both Raw and SmackDown. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work at first because you can adjust that as we go. And if nothing else, we as fans, we as individuals, we as human beings are just going to appreciate the fact that you are trying. You're going to have some naysayers going, this is rubbish, I don't like it. But they're going to say that about everything. Take them and push them to one side. They're going to watch anyway. Get in the cupboard. There are glimpses of this too, like the way the Miz Shane McMahon Raw beating was shot. I like that from the far away angle. And the Ali Pro Row on SmackDown also had a cinematic letterbox of feel. But these are the icing on the cake and you don't really need to worry about the icing right now. You need to focus on the actual middle because you've been dishing out chocolate cake for the last 20 years and now you just got to switch to cheesecake or you just got to switch to carrot cake or for the love of everything bake me a muffin. Give me something totally different. Scrap scripted promos. Push some guys I'm not expecting. Allow the wrestlers to express themselves in the ring. Don't start every single program with a 25 minute talking segment. Make the belts feel important again. Stop the hokey comedy and for everything in my being decide on what you want to do with the brand split and stick to it even if that is the wild card rule I'll accept it as long as you introduce a set of roles I can understand and it hangs around for a long time that's all I need consistency establish it and treat it like your firstborn child so if you wouldn't wake your firstborn child up and just hurl it into the wall don't do that with the wild card rules. So from now on, it's called wild card. That's your son, that's your daughter. It can be whatever you want. I don't care, but treat it with the respect it deserves. And I do actually respect WWE for acknowledging this and slowly making some tweaks, but not at the expense at shoving their hand into the middle of all this and ripping all the core out and then replacing it with something else. Because without that, it's going to be the same old WWE. Without addressing it, nothing will change and something has to change. It's not just going to happen over a few days. In fact, the next few months, maybe even the year, is going to be a little bizarre and it's going to be a little odd. Because if you are going to reintroduce something like long-term storylines, you've got to do it. You've got to let it cook. You've got to let it boil. You've got to let it build. And slowly fans will start telling everybody else, you should probably give it another go. I think they're onto something. That's when it all turns around. It's not going to be an easy ride, but it never is when you're fighting a rising tide. And yes, that rhyme, that is a pretty damn good poem. You can use it. It's basically not going to be a quick fix. You have to believe in what you're doing, listen out for feedback, and then see where you are at the end of 2019. And let's not pretend the end of 2019 isn't exceptionally important, because that's when SmackDown moves over to Fox. Fox ain't gonna mess around. You go on Fox and you tank their rating, you being bummed to FS1, which right now you don't want to do, because AEW on the day I'm recording this told us they're gonna broadcast their double or nothing pay-per-view 
on ITV. Not only that, their pre-show is going to be on ITV4. I understand that non-UK people will understand this. ITV is a very big deal over here. All in all, we are shaping up for an absolute crazy year when it does come to pro wrestling. And I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that All Elite Wrestling becomes the big competition for WWE, which finally makes them go, oh no, we've got to be creative. And I'm happy, you're happy, because competition creates cash, or controversy creates cash, whatever the hell Eric Bischoff said. But it's got to happen, and it's got to happen now. And for the love of everything, don't blame YouTube. Don't you blame my precious YouTube, which I stand right now. It protects me and sometimes annoys me when it does weird things. I stand with YouTube, and I always will. Now, yeah, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about WWE and then blaming the old YouTube there. Thanks very much for being here. Like, share, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com. We need yourself some Michaels. Follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture, WWE. And let's pimp YouTube. Go and watch more What Culture Wrestling videos. Click until your finger won't click no more. Rest it, do it again. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for watching What Culture Wrestling and the Why series. And again, WWE, you're doing the right things. You're thinking about it, but let's get in the dirt and let's just change everything. Let's kill 50-50 booking too. I should have talked about that. You should have let Drew McIntyre or Roman Reigns won on Monday. And you did something on Tuesday too, which I can't even remember now. Oh, Randy Orton came in. You could have given me Andrade versus Ali. It would have been good. Kill it. Build superstars. Make your titles mean something. Make me a happy man and everybody else. Not just about me, but the population. It's about the world. See ya.